What the devil's going on? Focus, sir. Vice Chancellor, it's my responsibility to protect the morals of the student body. Well, Dad, perhaps the student body would prefer to be responsible for its own morals. Perhaps it would. But while I'm in charge, well, that should put a stop to it. That's where we're going to put the new library. Because the old guard, like the place as it is, want to keep it to a thousand students. And I mean to double that in the next five years. And if every university in the country followed our example, well, we'd be on our way to a properly educated society. Whatever that may be. I don't try to be cynical, Jeremy. Sounds so callow in the young. What's his lordship up to now, I wonder? Today's arrests follow other recent accusations against Lord Montague involving Boy Scouts on his Hampshire estate. Late last year, the actor Sir John Gielgud was found guilty of public indecency in London. Darling, the concert's about to begin. Hmm. The two cases have given rise to widespread public anxiety about the state of morality in Britain oh. today. The other men charged with Lord Montague at Limington Police Station were his cousin, Mr. Michael Pitt Rivers, and the diplomatic correspondent of the Daily Mail, Mr. Peter Wildblood. My blood goes wild every time I see you, Jim. Hmm. John Gordon's on the rampage again. Listen, homosexuality is a filthy practice, destructive not only of men but of nations. Those who are whimpering in its defence would do Britain a better service by lending their support to stamping it out. I don't know why you allow this trash in the house. Oh, I must have my Giles cartoon. That's like one of Hitler's housefraus saying she takes the Sturmer for the recipes. No vodka. Sherry before Sunday lunch, Jeremy, not spirits. It'll have to be scotch, then. Got to scotch that ghastly, sanctimonious Scotchman somehow. And a sherry for you? Uh, not yet, thank you. You know, John Gordon's only saying what a lot of ordinary people feel. It's not natural. Everything in nature is natural, Mummy, by definition. That's far too clever for me. You shouldn't pretend to be stupid when you're not. Queers can love one another just the same as straights, you know. I wouldn't call what was going on in the park love. Well, what are people to do? There are thousands of them, tens of thousands, hundreds, wanting to live perfectly ordinary, decent lives, but living them in loneliness and fear because of people like John Gordon. It's like being Jews under Hitler. Oh, you do exaggerate so. You don't know anything about the Jews. I will have that sherry now, please. Thank you. Lord Montague is about to discover that peers of the realm are not above the law. Well, yes, Home Secretary, but his first trial did great damage to the reputation of the police. The attempt to alter his passport. Yes, yes. Papers were very critical. 
damn the papers. Well, coming on top of the Gilgood case, the use of agent provocateur in public laboratory. Yes, yes, thank you, Francis. You have regaled me with all of this before. Well, but I've been wondering, sir, since we're going to have a commission on prostitution, might it not kill two awkward birds with one deft stone to get it to look into the laws on homosexuality at the same time? I did not prosecute Goering and Nuremberg to go down in history as a man who made sodomy illegal. It would quieten the press. I mean, the current law is so arbitrary in its execution, when what goes on in private 99 times out of 100 remains so. Ah, but the hundredth discourages the others. Ah, but whenever there's inconsistency in the application of a particular law, it brings not only that law, but the whole system of justice into disrepute. We have a commission to homosexuality. All the disgusting details splashed across the papers. I'm not having that. A uh, Home Office committee doesn't have to publish its evidence like a royal commission. Well, to get the bum boys off my plate for a year or two, I suppose. By the time it reports, Winston will have retired, and I, please God, will be elsewhere. Number 10, sir. Lord Chancellor will do for me. We shall need a strong chairman. Five says he can't imagine anyone wanting to be on this committee, let alone chair it. The rules of people wanting to be useful, sir. And there could be a K in it. I was thinking perhaps we should go for a lawyer. In my judgment, difficult questions are best solved by good, plain sense. Not a lawyer, then. No, we need someone who's looking to step up, who's um, willing to do what the minister wants, but courageous enough to accept the actual evidence. Flexible, therefore but not interfering. Someone will leave the donkey work to you, who has no strong views of his own, but who doesn't need to pretend to be shocked by the subject. Well, but people really were shocked by Oscar Wilde, weren't they? Well, they aren't anymore. Put his players on all the time, even in boys' schools. Wilde was in prison in Reading, wasn't he? Yes, the Ballad of Reading Jail. It's very fine. Vice-Chancellor of Reading University, Jack Wolfenden, wants to expand. He's hoping for a big government grant. Headmaster of Shrewsbury, wasn't he? Though he only went to a grammar school himself. Fife won't like that. But he sent his son to Eton. Fife will like that. You mean the Ministry of Education? No, sir. He definitely said the Home Office. Hmm. Wolfenden. You played hockey for England, I believe. Yes. Very nearly killed against Scotland. Got a puck right on the point of the jaw. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you survived. Thank you. We have a job for you. You worked for the uh, government before, I believe. Oh, I was director of pre-entry training for the RAF during the war, yes, sir. And uh, Rab Butler tells me you did a very good job chairing the youth advisory service to the Board of Education. Hmm. Well. So, you know all about young men and their temptations, all too many of which blatantly parade our streets. You see, we are... Uh, setting up a committee to look into the laws on prostitution. And also, and it's a distasteful subject, and there has been a tremendous growth in homosexuality since before the war. We want to know what the law can do about it. Do about it? There are some people, uh, people even in the Home Office, who believe we should do nothing. Well, I have to tell you, sir, that I personally find the idea of men engaging in sexual relations with one another repugnant. But uh, you taught philosophy at Oxford, so you would never allow your personal feelings to uh, influence your judgment, I feel sure. Hmm. I think I get your drift. Ladies and gentlemen, the task with which we are faced is difficult. 
awkward. Perhaps distasteful. It's only a couple of days a month I can't see the university objecting. But I do rather wonder what it'll do for my reputation. I should have thought the chairmanship of a major government committee would do a good deal. Darling, could you? Yeah. Well, it's not a royal commission. No, but if you say no to this one, they may never ask you again. And you'd enjoy a larger stage, you know you would. Mm. Well, one can't stay in a small place like this forever, I suppose. <laughs> you know, politicians are not very well educated. Maxwell Fife <laughs> says homosexual instead of homosexual. Huh? Well, the word comes from the Greek homos, the same. Not the Latin homo, a man. Oh. Amazing how many people don't know that. Do we have any ginger biscuits? Uh, in the kitchen, I think. Looks like rain, so you better get a move on. I'm doing my best. past your bedtime. Dad. Look. <sighs> I'm feeling a bit headachey, Maureen. I think I'll go for a stroll. Charlie. Charlie? Charlie Bullard. What are you doing tonight? Ken? I fancied a bit of, you know. It's Charlie. Yeah. Are you doing anything tonight? Next week, maybe? OK, cheers. Lovely evening for it, isn't it? Now, Priscilla, you come with me. How 
are very tiresome. He had no business bringing you into it. Had he not? When you, who are under 21, and for whom I therefore still consider myself responsible, when you go back to Eton to advise a boy on his sordid sexual affair with another... It wasn't sordid or sexual. I specifically advised against any sexual expression. They weren't suited to one another. Anyone could see that. Don't be impudent. And for heaven's sake, take off those glasses indoors. But the specialist says... I don't care what the specialist says. Take them off. You've disappointed me, Jeremy. Disappointed me very much. I'm afraid I must disappoint you still further. I'm sorry, Dad, but I'm queer. Boulder dash. I think I should know. You know nothing. I wasn't a headmaster for 16 long years without seeing many, many boys who imagined, like you, that they were homosexual. It's a common enough error. A category error, you might say, in any adolescent community. A few months after leaving school, they found they were perfectly normal. <laughs> You'd served as a proper sailor on a real fighting ship instead My of... My eyesight! You've been at school too long, one way and another. But Oxford will soon put you straight. Oh, a joke! Hooray! Don't be flippant with me! Like so many very clever young people, your emotions have a long way to go to catch up with your intellect. Well, now listen. It's not just you who's involved here, it's me too, my future. Which means the future for us all as a family. I've been asked to chair a committee for the Home Office. To abolish hanging? About time. Prostitution. No, you can't abolish that. Calvin tried once in Geneva. Put more than half the population in jail. Not one to time abolish it, to investigate the law relating to it. Also, you may find this amusing, that relating to homosexuality. To see what changes, if any, should be made. Well, that's easy. Do away with the law altogether. When society needs to be rebuilt, there's no use trying to rebuild it on the old plan. Sound familiar? Attempting. John Stuart Mill said attempting to rebuild it on the old plan. Mill also said, and I imagine you would agree with him, that a civilised community has the right to exercise power over its members against their will in order to prevent harm to others, which of course includes the young. How young? People of your age. Now, I shall naturally be somewhat in the public eye while this committee is meeting. And if you were to behave in the same unconsidered way as you have at Eton, well, <laughs> you would make my position untenable. So watch your step. All right. I'll watch my step if you'll recommend the change in the law. I'll recommend whatever the evidence suggests. And you will stay completely away from Eton. And for heaven's sake, stop trying to be cleverer than everyone else. I shan't mention any of this to the Home Office. Dad, please, I really am. Queer. You'll be meeting in room 101, I'm afraid. <laughs> Not very auspicious. What's your worst nightmare, Wolfenden? Uh, I don't... Uh, I very rarely dream. Lucky you. I'm giving you Conway Roberts here. You'll find he's a typical Welshman. Got a name you're not sure how to spell. Claims to love his native land while spending his entire working life here in London. Shall we? I don't know if you've had any thoughts on the membership of your committee, sir. Well, one's dreadfully constrained by the need for balance. You've got to have C of E and R, C. A few Jews, they work so hard on committees. Uh, Tory and Labour, men and women, you should have at least a couple of women on your team. Dance enough for a rugger team. Yeah, there'll be a certain amount of scrumming down, I expect. And a good deal of rucking and quite a lot of loose ball. Here we are.
I thought we should start with the church and the law. They get so stuffy if they don't come first. The Scottish law is different to ours, so we'll need a procurator fiscal. He's a sort of public prosecutor. <laughs> yes, I know that. Of course. Next, we will have a lady from the Conservative Women's Association. Terrific hats. Who's our second lady? Ah, we've chosen someone who covers several requirements in one, being Scots and Jewish, as well as female. Quite a find, our Mrs. Cohen. High up in the girl guides, apparently. Well, I suppose that bodes well. Desmond Curran's a psychiatrist who use for capital punishment cases. Very sound. Next, your Labour MP. And then another very gratifying treble, a Scots Catholic peer, Lord Lothian. Lothian? Hmm. My son was at Eton with his nephew. He's a junior minister. He won't rock the boat. And last but not least, your Tory MP to keep him company. Well, there you have it. A representative sample of the supposedly great and good. Shouldn't give you any trouble. There's no Welshman. Oh, Lord. No Welshman. I'm a complete blank when it comes to the Welshman, I'm afraid. There's a chap I know from Vice-Chancellor's meetings. Garonwy Rees. Aberystwyth. Always lively. Now, if you want liveliness, you shall have it. Garonwy Rees. Major Spellman. None other. I've taken the liberty. Your drink, sir. Vodka. Very good. Pretty tough, the Russian course, they say. Not really. Speak it like a native now, do you? The tutors say I talk like a tout on the Moscow racetrack. <laughs> Thanks. Russian speakers are very desirable to the Foreign Office for obvious reasons, which is why we're wondering what sort of plans you might have for when you finish your national service, in case we can be of use to one another. When you say Foreign Office, I take it you mean... You can take it any way you like. <laughs> Do you people try it on with everyone on the course? After the Navy, I'm going to Oxford to... Same do... subject, am I right, and same college as your father. You have been doing your research. Indeed. And are you planning an academic career like him? No. I want to be a journalist. A foreign correspondent. I want to travel the world with a typewriter, a revolver, and a bottle of scotch. Fearlessly telling the truth. Of course. And making the sort of personal contacts which diplomats can't. Though we can help you to get to people in places that might otherwise be inaccessible. I'm afraid I'm no use to you, sir. I'm queer. I know that. Some of our very best people are homosexual. Without family ties, they can devote themselves wholeheartedly to patriotic work. You see, for us, sexual leaning is only a problem. When it's concealed, then, well, blackmail can come into it, obviously. But if we know a chap's queer... Doesn't that involve just a little hypocrisy? As long as our chaps don't do anything to draw attention to themselves. As Guy Burgess did. <laughs> Guy. Very funny man when he wasn't drunk. <clears throat> oh, I think our table's ready. Hungry? Right. <clears throat> um, well, if we may begin. Thank you. The task with which we're faced is difficult and perhaps distasteful. And I haven't the faintest idea what we shall ultimately recommend. But I hope we can conduct our business with as little formality as possible. And um, this morning, as, as I was leaving Reading, I noticed the Huntley and Palmer's biscuit factory there by the railway. And I thought perhaps we might call the homosexuals Huntley and the prostitutes Palmer's. 
to avoid embarrassing our stenographers. Yep. <clears throat> um. Oh, let's call a tart a tart. There's no point in being mealy-mouthed. Well, it's not a question of being mealy-mouthed. And... We will, I hope, be considering possible forms of treatment. Oh, yes, indeed, Dr. Curran. Mm. Ways, for instance, in which homosexuals might learn to accept themselves for what they are. Well, do we want them to? We don't want burglars to learn to accept themselves, do we? Why homosexuals? Yes, well... We'll be interviewing some actual homosexuals, I hope. And prostitutes. And some policemen and sergeants. We don't just want the official line, do we? No, certainly not, Lord Lothian. No, no. Um, well, I thought we might start, if this is agreeable, by considering the Home Office Memorandum. Uh, Mr. Graham Harrison, if you'd like to. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's been widely canvassed of late that unnatural relations between consenting adults in private ought not to constitute criminal offences unless they can be shown to have an adverse effect on society. Well, we shall have to consider what is meant by adversely. Adversely means detrimentally. It means badly. For me, Mr. Chairman, the issue of public decency is paramount. Well, we shall certainly not want to weaken the law in those areas. Steady on, Mr. Chairman. Don't want to jump the gun, do we? Mike. <clears throat> Thank you. Why on earth have they put James Adair on this committee? It's the most terrible bigot. A committee has to represent all shades of opinion. But his opinions have no shade at all. They simply glare. How clever of them to have put you on the same staircase where Dad used to have his rooms. Oh, I'm sure he arranged it. He wants me to tread exactly in his footsteps like King Wenzel's last page. <laughs> come on, darling. On you come. Oh, Jeremy, could you help me? Hello. What a hand this. Thanks. I wish you'd stay. I wish I could. I'm sick of this. This town, this life. Everything. Yeah. Well, why don't we leave? You and me, just go somewhere else. I can't do that. I've got kids, you know that. But you like me. You say you love me. Of course I do. I wouldn't keep coming back otherwise, would I? But you go away again, you always go away again. Friday? I can always get away Fridays. If we went to Nottingham, say, Birmingham, it doesn't matter what your wife says. Can't. You could. You just don't want to. Oh, good night, Charlie. You say you love me, then you just fuck off. In my area, Chelsea, that is, the men that go in for it do it for the love of the thing. Half the thrill comes in the chase. I'm sure of it. There's always fresh ground to conquer, shall I say? That's the way these chaps look at it. You look in their diaries. Uh, are you allowed to do that? Of course, prisoner's property. That's right. The same numbers keep cropping up all the time. If they ever want a party, they ring up these numbers and... Sounds no different from the way I organize a party myself. Oh. Their parties are of a very peculiar sort, sir. And they like to meet fresh blood, too. Always on the lookout for something different. The finer arts, you might say. 
And he said, what Sir John Gilgood was doing when you arrested him? Auditioning, you might say. In a manner of speaking. We get him from every walk of life. I've had serving soldiers, members of the clergy, Americans. If you'll excuse me, madam. They like to use the mouth, Americans. <clears throat> we get people from any occupation that has an air of artificiality. Hairdressing, dress designing, that sort of thing. They uh, like to make themselves up, some of them. Adopt female attire, put on a mincing sort of gait. Ricking of perfume. Plucking their eyebrows. Wave their hair. Diet. Paint their fingernails. How do these people behave when you um, arrest them? Do they panic? Well, sir, to accuse a man of importuning male persons is nearly as serious as accusing him of murder. It is the most awful thing that could happen to a man. Yes, sir. First-timers like Sir John, they do panic. But the regulars, they take it pretty much for granted. One man, I've arrested him eight times. He knows he's been done to rights, goes into court the next morning, pleads guilty, pays his fine, that's it. It depends what the man has to lose. Do many people get off? Only lost one case in my life, sir. But if they go home um, to one another's flats, say, then there's nothing we can do. Unless one turns the other in. you never to ring me. But I haven't seen you for so long. I just wanted to say baby's been ill. We didn't know if she was. I've got my own life, Charlie, and it's nothing to do with you. My kids. Your kids. It's always your bloody kids. What never... about me? I should never have got involved. This isn't what I do. Is it money you want? Money? You think that I want money? I can't see you again. gone out for a walk. Tell him I called and I'll call again. <coughs> For sake, Jay. I don't believe in God. Better believe in the president and fellows. They can send you down. I couldn't answer a single one of their questions and I was sober when I wrote my paper. I don't need to be sober to run rings around those Charlies. Oh, we better get you in there. Wolfenden, never in 50 years have I seen a philosophy paper quite like this.
Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure I'm very stupid. I don't know how other members of the committee feel. But I find that we're getting a plethora of strong feeling combined with a sad lack of hard evidence. <clears throat> For instance, it's clear that the, the number of prosecutions has risen since before the war, but um, that has the number of homosexuals risen accordingly. Mm, of course not. The larger figure is entirely down to increased police activity. The witch hunt. There has been no such thing. As the police have assured us. The police say a lot of things that aren't true. And unfortunately, the magistrates believe them. What evidence have you for saying that? All too much. Mr. Adair, please. We could ask the expert, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Kinsey of the famous report happens to be in London, and I... I'd call it infamous. Personally, I found it a jolly good read. <laughs> I could arrange a meeting. Uh-huh. Hmm. Americans, isn't it? I say, this is pretty tough stuff. The meaning of meaning. What's the meaning of that? Child's play. First year philosophy. So, how's it going? All right. My friend Philip and I are taking over the ISIS next term. The student magazine, that is, not the river. I've taken a vow against exercise. Wise move. Might this Philip be interested in... I'm afraid he's almost pathologically straight. I didn't mean that. I meant... He was in the parachute regiment. I imagine he'll have been approached about patriotic work there. If they you will let me know if there's anyone else who you think might have a hankering for it, won't you? Hmm. So, still planning a career in journalism, then? Yes. Because if you're not doing anything during the long vacation, I have some friends who work on The Times, if you'd like to work there this summer. You're really Major Mephistopheles, aren't you? From my uh, observation of London, you have more prostitutes on the street than Havana, Cuba. And uh, if you have a lot of prostitutes, it's because you have uh, a lot of clients. It was the war, Dr. Kinsey. There was a general relaxation of morals. Very probably, but uh, the number of men seeking outlet with prostitutes or other men or animals, whatever it is, never fundamentally alters. We have determined that on a scale from zero to six, where zero is exclusively heterosexual and six is exclusively homosexual, that some 4% of American male population is uh, wholly homosexual, uh, which means uh, how many people are there in Britain? About 50 million. Then you'll have some uh, 25 million males, of whom about a million are or have been or will be wholly homosexual. I'm sure Britain doesn't. Uh... Of course, they're not all active at the same time, but uh, many more have, have had, or will have homosexual contact to orgasm during the course of their lives. Over a third of the male population. Is there, um, would you say, there is any evidence that um, people's sexuality, at what age would you say it becomes fixed? Generally, uh, about 16, which is the age of consent in Denmark and Sweden. The uh, American Law Institute is proposing 18. And what about treatment? Do you think treatment can be effective, Dr. Kinsey? Well, occasionally, in the categories four and five, the hormones can be useful, sure. Uh, sure, they can uh, reduce the libido in uh, pedophiles, for instance, but uh, they can't alter the direction of the uh, sexual impulse once it's established.
Come on, Jay. Come on. I don't know why, but I find it extraordinarily hard to make love to people I like. Don't you? Let's go down to the bus station then. The labs there are full of strangers. Can't do that. It's all right. Somebody usually keeps a lookout. No. Your father. Daddy's boy. Stayed away, I see. He doesn't like facts. They get in the way of his fixed ideas. I don't think our chairman liked Dr. Kinsey's facts either. It's time some of our committee lost their virginities. Is it true there's to be a cabinet reshuffle? That Maxwell Fife's moving to be Lord Chancellor? Don't ask me, ministers. Royal is the last to know, but yes, that is the word. I mean, what's the monkey going to do without his organ grinder, eh? My beat. We're only trying to help. Fuck off! We haven't been able to find any professional palmers. Now we've run into a little trouble with the Huntleys, too. Oh? We do have a witness coming, a man of some distinction. He runs a museum. He wants a guarantee we won't inform the authorities if he tells us what he... what he gets up to. Surely you know by now. If we do give such a safeguard, it could lead us to being accused of misprision of felony. We could even go to prison as accomplices to illegal acts. Really, it's all so hypocritical, isn't it? I mean, we all know lots of queers, don't we? Carol and I do. You must meet lots in your high church circle. Certainly not. Ah, well, if that's your line. I was talking to a judge last night. He said a colleague had asked him what he gave a man who willingly submitted to buggery. He said five pounds and any loose change I happen to have in my pocket. Oh, I've shocked you. I'm so sorry. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Parker. Call him Parker. I've got a bakery down the... I know. Devonshire Road. And you want to report a case of blackmail? Not blackmail, exactly. But he won't leave me alone. All right. Well, if you'd like to tell me who, give me the details. Charlie Bullard. This young man, Bullard. Where did you meet him? The sports ground. And you and he, you... We saw each other for a few months, then he became demanding. I told him I couldn't see him anymore, and he... During those months, did you... Did offences take place? That's not the point. He, he says he'll tell my wife. It's harassment, that's, that's against the law. Indeed it is, Mr Parker. But then so is what you and he got up to. Look, I've got two kids. What we did was just a, a, you know. No, I don't. Tell me. How much 
homosexuality is neither a deliberate vice or per se a crime any more than a number of other manifestations of the sex impulse. I'm afraid, sir, you are wrong. It is a crime under the existing statutes. What difference do you think a change in the law would make to you personally? It wouldn't alter my life one shot. Except for the fear which is always there that there might be a disaster at any moment. That would be removed. It would reduce your travails. Yes. And it would decrease the provocations and stratagems of the police. Their squalid and disagreeable intrigues. Have you ever tried to overcome your inclinations? Yes. I got married. But it was a complete disaster. Not only for me, but for my wife. The strain on both of us. Uh, and on the children. You have to understand, for homosexuals, heterosexuality is a poor substitute for the real thing. Do you think the law, as it stands, deters anyone from being homosexual? <laughs> Even if the heavens fell, the law could not stop anyone from being homosexual. What's this week's editorial? The Professorship of Poetry. It's very important, of course, to Oxford. I want to be wonderful when we're writing about the real world. The H-bomb. Suez Canal. Something for you to review. Piece of wild blood. Queer. Looks much more up your street. Why don't you review it yourself? Can't. My father cuts out everything I write. Awards it alpha minus or beta plus plus and sticks it in a book. He is quaintly proud of me. And there's your queer, surely. Oh, yes. He asked me to wear less lipstick while he chaired his committee. That's a joke, Dumbo. I wasn't going to tell his wife. Not really. And I didn't want money. I just wanted... He's afraid of the sea. That's what it is. That's why he's let me down. Very nice. That bloke in Marlow, how much did he get for attempted blackmail, Harry? Seven. Seven years. <sighs> These people in this little book of yours, meet them at the sports ground too, did you? Some of them. Any of them let you down too? I haven't seen any of them, not since I met Colin. You sure about that? They're just friends. 26 by my count, Harry. Can't get enough, eh? <laughs> right. You've not been in trouble before, have you? No. Can you give me the names of anyone else you've been friends with? Make a clean breast. We might be able to forget the blackmail altogether. Doing, 
getting the god out of all awful people. Well, he's lost Maxwell Fife. He needs someone equally reactionary to guide his thinking. Um, we are <clears throat> very honoured that the Lord Chief Justice should find the time to address us. We really need guidance on the question of how far the state should regulate individual behaviour. Well, my view is simple. Sexual acts between men are repulsive even to consider. The exploitation of young men by older perverts is something utterly to be reprehended, but there are many other offences equally disgusting and reprehensible. The seduction and desertion of young girls, for instance, is not punished by law. Homosexual acts have none of the other constituents of a crime. No one is damaged but the participants themselves. You mean it may be a sin, but not a crime? I've said what I've said. Indecency between adults, provided that it is committed in private, should not be the concern of the criminal law. What about buggery? You would not put buggery beyond the law? I would leave it as a crime. Why? Because it is a disgusting parody of normal sexual behaviour. It is a mockery of the real thing. The real thing can be a bit of a mockery sometimes, can't it? <laughs> Orphandon, at a loss for words. I thought I'd live to see that. Well, Goddard, you, you mentioned the exploitation of young men. The age of consent must be kept at 21. It would not be feasible to make it any older. But national servicemen must be protected. So keep it at 21. Goddard's only Lord Chief Justice of England. Scotland retains its judicial independence. Good Lord. What? It's my son, Jeremy. Straighten up, Donald, for God's sake. It's my father. Hello. We've just walked out of salad days. It was dire. Oh, my wife and I enjoyed it very much. Um, Jeremy, Lord Lothian, um, Mrs. Cohen, and Mr. Adair. Oh, Lord, are we just barging into a secret session of the committee? Mr. Adair's having water, but the rest of us are having a very necessary drink. We're still reeling after the shock of Lord Goddard. Hey, what did he recommend? Flogging, hanging, or the rack? Do you have the college's permission to be in London? Term ended this morning, Dad. Ah. So when did you start at Printing House Square? Hmm? Jeremy's got himself a holiday job on the Times. Oh, well done. You're going to be a journalist, are you? I, I hope so, sir. Uh, can you put us well out of the earshot of my father? Well, he'll accuse me of leaking to the gutter press. Times, gutter. <laughs> if you care to follow me, sir. Come along, Donald. We'll leave them to their lucubrations. Good evening. Ah, oh, what? <laughs> Excuse me while I go and be sick. How old's Jeremy? 21 at the end of the month. We share birthdays, matter of fact. He's very blonde. me very much the other night, you and your friend. I'm sorry, how? He was drunk, and you asked me to reveal confidential matters in front of members of the committee. Well, what did he say? I can't tell you. Well, for heaven's sake, why not? Did he say something terribly shocking? Everyone should be allowed to do what he wants, for instance? Not quite. He said, consenting adults and private should not be subject to the law. Oh, what a turn up for the book. Now you can recommend abolition with a completely clear conscience. I shall make up my mind according to the evidence. It's not a question of evidence, it's a question of what's the right thing to do. Oh, you're an authority on that now, are you? I'm 21, Dan. A consenting adult. I 
never imagine what a building will look like from the ground plan. Just as one can never guess how one's children are going to turn out. Jeremy. Happy birthday. Jeremy! Don't you know what's going on? No? What? Yeah, well, I'm up in court next month, mate. serve four years. Thomas David Watson, three years. Frederick William Jones, three years. Charles Bullard, because of the assistance you gave the police, I am sentencing you to six months suspended. Because there's always something wrong with the world, and I want to put it right. <laughs> Homework, you two. Off you go. Are you doing this simply to annoy your father? The, the Times asked me to cover the story, and that's... Don't lie to me. You asked the Times if you could do it, didn't you? Your father is doing his level best to find some sort of compromise for these people. Compromise? Yes, that's Dad all over. He spent months on this unpleasant business. And therefore, any independent view is filial disloyalty. He's always had the highest hopes for you. And you've had so many advantages that he never had. Therefore, I must be exactly like him, only more so. But I'm not, Mummy. I'm me. I don't want the children reading about these things. You're not the only pebble on the beach, you know. All right. Go back to London right there. The case is over now, anyway. Average sentence, three and a half years for not being the way Dad wants them. Not much compromise there, is there? Well, I think the time has now come for us to take a vote on whether we shall or shall not recommend a change in the law consenting adults in private be allowed to practice whatever sexual activities they wish. Those in favour? We are almost unanimous, Mr Adair. Can we not persuade you to join the majority? No. It would look so much better in the report. I'm afraid I can't help you. Well, you will write a dissenting opinion. I will. Ah, uh, well, the next step is to decide on the age of consent. I'm for 18. I'd prefer 16, actually. I'm with Mrs. Corn. But if we put the age too low, people say we're not protecting the young. I think we should keep it at 21. The state can't act like a good parent. In the end, it can only say... We won't worry about our children over a certain age. They haven't 
used it. Where is it? Where is it? Fuck! Today's Sunday pictorial carries fresh revelations about the scandalous life of the double agent Guy Burgess. Burgess made a dramatic reappearance in Moscow last month, announcing his defection to the Soviet Union, following a long association with the KGB. The Sunday pictorial articles are written by a close but anonymous friend, about whose identity there is great speculation. We're quite sure Reese has written this. Oh, yes. I have people telephoning me all through Sunday. Now the Telegraph has named him. Liveliness is often a problem on committees. We went through great turmoil, very great turmoil indeed, before deciding to recommend a relaxation of the law. But if Reese's name is attached to it, not to mention Burgess, spy on a homosexual, well, <laughs> wouldn't have come at a worse time. It's supposed to be a secret, but I'm getting a knighthood in the Queen's birthday honours. Very well deserved, if I may say so. Oh, thank you. I don't want to press you, but the Home Secretary is asking very politely when your report might be expected to see the light of day. Oh, well, not for some time yet. We've still got to do buggery. Ah. Well, Sir John, if I may be the first to call you that. Hmm. I'll see what I can do about Reese. When does your father's report actually appear? God knows. Not been home much recently. And you'd like to be as far away from it as possible? It's what foreign correspondents do. Would you be interested in Moscow? You could get to know Burgess personally, and he might have some interesting things to say. Of course, you'd have to be very careful. Know exactly what you were doing. None of this guff about betraying one's country rather than one's friend. Playing on both sides can be very tricky. Oh, I can manage that. I've been doing it all my life. Charlie Bullard? No, he's gone. He's gone to London, I think. Cheers. Parker. So. Morning, Mr. Parker. I didn't honestly think you'd get away with it. Come on. I think my wife buys our bread from there.
maximum penalty for buggery at present is life imprisonment, Mr. Chairman. If the committee's recommendation is accepted, it should only apply to those committing it with those under age or in public. Um, we don't often have the weather for that in Scotland. As it stands, gross indecency, fellatio, intercrural mutual masturbation is two years. Attempted buggery, ten years. Ten years. <laughs> ten years when the chap hasn't even made it. The disproportion is preposterous. It's against all reason. No one in his right mind can possibly argue for its continuance. Well, many people do regard buggery with particular horror. I'm afraid the press will jump on us if we say it ought not to be treated more seriously than anything else. But there is no social or other distinction between people who commit it and those who don't. But wouldn't the retention of it as a separate offence make it easier for people to accept the main change that we're recommending? No one likes the thought of his son being buggered. <clears throat> I think Lord Lothian has put it exactly right. It's one thing for us to discuss, as we have done, the issue theoretically. But the act itself is something that the general public will continue, I have no doubt, to find distasteful. I hope you're not backsliding, Mr Chairman. People won't want their noses rubbed in, in the details. I think we've forgotten how inured we've become to these matters over the past two years. I think we should leave buggery where it was. But that's illogical. Very little in life is entirely logical, Mrs Cohen. Put it to the vote. Our recommendation is important morally and socially. May I suggest we leave the offence where it is and recommend lowering the penalty? I think that's an excellent compromise, Mr Chairman. But this will affect people's lives. They will go on going to prison. People from all walks of life it is a question of not running before we can walk. Then all our work will have to be done again in a few years' time. Excuse me. Mrs. Cohen. The Queen was pleased. Hmm. Very pleased. No wonder. It's only 20 minutes back to Windsor. Don't be so awful. I thought she was very nice. That's what she's paid to be. You've really put Reading on the royal map, have you? None of your cynicism, please. Not today. What about the report? Out in September. The Home Secretary intends to bring in legislation along the lines you recommend to keep the prostitutes off the streets. As to your other proposals, he feels more time is needed to give full consideration to all the issues. How much more time? When a matter like this, where deep emotions are aroused, uh, 14 years is the usual time lag between recommendations and legislation. 14 years? On average. But you're young. You should live to see your recommendations put into practice. 
And the Home Secretary asks me to say that it's an admirable report. Admirable. And he's very grateful to you and the committee. He hopes you've enjoyed the work. The Hampstead intellectuals who produced this nonsense are completely out of touch with the real world. Family life needs protection from these evils, not a charter for Nancy's. Nancy's. I agree. I'm profoundly shocked. I don't want my son growing up in a world where men can attack him with impunity. I'm sure she thinks it's perfectly normal for men to attack her daughter with impunity. Come on, girls. What are you going to give it? Beta minus. Beta plus plus, I think. Oh. Well, the analysis is very good. And you've laid it out so the meanest intelligence can follow it. Very generous, I'm sure. And I'd have given you an alpha if only you'd followed the logic of your own arguments. I suppose you mean the age of consent. And buggery. But for all its faults, for all the fact you've only tidied sex away from public view, tarts and queers, the report has done something remarkable. A subject which the English simply couldn't discuss is now on everyone's lips. The genie is out of the bottle and can never be put back. I mean, buggers still can't be choosers, but people are less afraid already. You did the right thing against your own personal inclination, Dad. That makes you an admirable man. Admirable. If you would find another word. There was more to it than failed logic. I wanted to... to protect the innocent. No one is innocent. Not after 16. You have to let people be what they are. They're going to be it anyway. I must go. Darling, your taxi's here. Yes. Don't you think, with all your academic success, your first-class degree and now all souls, and I, I was only a mere headmaster, you could be head of an Oxford college, vice-chancellor of the finest university in the world, not just Reading, hmm? don't you think? No. No, en enough of school. Um. I don't like the idea of you in Moscow. I do. Hmm. Well, I shall be reading your reports with no doubt admiration. Not in the engagements column, I'm afraid. Bye, Dad. Bye, old, Bye, old chap. It's a rather good concert on tonight. Shall we listen?
The shocking story of Joe Meek next on BBC Four. Gay Pride and Prejudice in Politics at 11.20. And later, Changing Times, the outrageous life of the legendary transvestite Lee Byrie. The past 